everyone, and thank you uh, for introduction. So yeah, maybe let's start and let's talk about the John controller ship and well, all the moves and all the situations where we probably underuse the John controller ship as a situation. So let's talk first of all about the basics a little bit about the concept of John controller ship, which is seems first of all it seems very simple. Yeah, sure. Like there are two controllers or more controllers. We jointly determine the purposes and means of processing. So, okay, a joint agreement, joint uh, goal, joint purpose, joint approach. But the problem is, uh, well, what is that determining, the joint determining of purposes and means even? And where does it apply in practice? Because it really, like, from just from a view like that, it seems quite simple, but it probably isn't that much. So, yeah, so, so first step is naturally. Are these joint controllers? Are these controllers at all? Because if one of those parties is not a controller, then yeah, we cannot be joint controllers. So that's kind of basic. I won't go into details because that would probably make, create a second presentation by itself. What is a joint controller? What is a controller and what isn't? But yeah, it is a factual analysis. So even though, of course, you need to look into agreement, you need to look into what parties agreed on or how. What's the factual situation? But still, it's about a factual situation there. Uh, what is the relationship? What, what, what are the uh, conditions that uh, those uh, different controllers interact in? So there's no need to have a comprehensive or equal control. It doesn't mean that like, both parties just need to really specifically define like one is responsible for this part, the other is for the other part. It's, it can be like, yeah, just slight interaction between different parties can already cause a joint controllership to an extent. Common or converging decisions. That's even more interesting because that basically means that it is not necessarily the, just a decision of, okay, let's do uh, this type of processing, let's agree that this is, this is the purpose that we want to achieve, and let's do it. It can just be uh, different purposes uh, and converging in a certain situation, meaning that it can be creating it quite well unexpectedly sometimes, and we'll go into some case law a little bit further. So, and well, again, it doesn't need me to be like uh, access to that data. Doesn't need to be uh, like not all even not all parties need to have access to that data for it to be a joint controllership. But both must decide on to an extent on the purposes and means. So if one of them is deciding on purposes, one on means, even though of course like in, in theory it's much more like a theoretical, I guess, case, then it wouldn't be a joint controllership. But what would that be, to be honest? That's a good question, and uh, I won't be answering that because there's, well, no clear uh, practical situation I could analyze, to be honest, because it's very much theoretical. Um, Forms can be very different, and it's, it's important to understand. And it's a common, relatively common misconception that if you are joint controllership, that means that from a to, uh, from the start to the end, from collection of data to I don't know deletion of data, uh, you are joint controllers. That's it. That's not the case at all. It's the case where uh, different uh, controllers uh, can interact between each other and uh, different situations, and only one, one small part of that interaction can become joint controllership because it can really differ. And you are not becoming automatically responsible for the entire uh, chain of that different processing operations becoming a joint, uh, joint controller. Uh, I had some examples uh, that I either looked into from my personal experience or looked into the, well, different uh, EDPB or different data protection authority guidelines. So one of them is, well, when I online pilot from if it is about, well, it is selling, let's say, to individuals, to persons, uh, and they have a pro sellers. So let's say they are business, business customers that are definitely not uh, processing the data in like their own uh, personal capacity or like uh, for your home purposes, but definitely like it's one of those cases where it's, um, well, business context. So in that case, it's impossible to fully avoid or to kind of, it, we must recognize that in that context, uh, joint controllership would occur uh, to an extent, to at least to some extent, for example, to facilitate and enable that transaction to happen between uh, just a seller using the platform and a professional uh, 
professional seller is using the platform and uh, individual who is kind of buying a, an item, for example, from that in person. So this is a case where like a joint controllership, well, would exist to an extent. The other is online booking platform is for me, DPB guidelines. So it's a much more like also an interesting case where like at least to an extent if several companies are trying to create a single deal, let's say, and like a package deal, and we interacting and exchanging the data between in that context, that could also create a joint control ship situation to that degree. Tenancy management. Again, if uh, let's say uh, uh, a company is managing a different like build, let's say yeah, a property management firm manages uh, tenants and the students, let's say, and the university is owning that uh, that complex. They are the ones that are organizing it. To an extent, in that context, it would be impossible to avoid joint controllership in terms of sharing the data, interacting, organizing the management, and managing the tenants of those uh, areas. And yeah, and management will have the programs. I won't go into detail, but it is, of course, if you are just working together and creating a loyalty program with another co different companies and sharing the data to enable that, well, it's probably impossible to avoid. Uh, having a joint controllership to a degree in that context. Okay, uh, really quick, so about the forum. Uh, interesting is that uh, joint controllers are free to agree on different forms of joint controllership uh, so to kind of how to formalize it. It can be, in theory, it could even be like a, not a written agreement, it, even though I can't imagine it working in practice, because if it's not a written agreement, how can you clearly define the responsibilities? How can you make them clearly available to individuals? Like, yeah, I, I can't imagine how it would work in practice, but GPR does, in theory, allow that. Um, in some cases, it will be defined by law, but of course, uh, yeah, it, uh, probably to a degree, and still, if, like, it, if it doesn't cover all the necessities, it wouldn't also be. Uh, enough just to be defined by law. The contents are mostly free to, for, for different entities to decide, joint controllers to decide, but there is like some limitations about what decisions can, uh, what could be made in that regard, but uh, the right to, uh, who should be responsible for informing and who should be the ones that are managing data subject rights and how it is being set up, these are parts of that uh, must be well, set up in a joint controllership agreement, or well, agreement that includes joint controllership. The other parts, the other arrangements are free for the joint controllers to decide on what to include. Uh, of course, a huge question is always where does the joint controllership start, where does it end? So, like, where, which part is uh, really joint controllership, but which isn't? And that's probably it's a good idea to kind of define that as much as possible in the agreement. Uh, it is, of course, a situation where, like, no, not always easy to identify. With, for example, data subject rights requests are made for joint controllership context, because especially if you are, if joint controllership is just part, small part of your like interaction with a data subject, um, identifying and managing that joint controllership context uh, is not always easy, and it can be quite tricky. It might not be possible to distribute all obligations, so like. Even though joint controllership arrangements can split all the different responsibilities between joint controllers of who is responsible for what, well, certain uh, responsibilities are still on a controller just because they are just universally applicable to every single controller. And uh, it is important to ability to demonstrate these roles. Well, that can be tricky as, well, you should do some kind of assessment and should be able to define how did you came to the conclusion that you are joint controllers and that you are not joint controllers. And that's not always very simple, especially if uh, if that company has like a lot of different uh, other clients, and they are saying, "Okay, we are not joint controllers, and we are not going to be joint controllers with you." But and situations can evolve. So the fact that you define that, okay, we are not joint joint controllers in that single area, it can change if you change your agreement, if you change your setup, you change your interaction, the cooperation of a certain company. Okay really quickly about the future. So two different cases uh, that are kind of not yet in like in the pipeline. So one of the situation is the Belgian DPA decision against IAB Europe. So this could have a lot of major implications for online platforms and anyone else who is using third party uh, ads or advertising actually on any like these 
kind of huge uh, real-time bidding platforms because uh, the idea is that uh, Belgian DPA explained that there are convergent decisions uh, for in with IB Europe and all other participants of these kind of uh, systems, meaning that uh, that could create a joint control relationship between both the organizers, so IB Europe as like a creator of the framework of for like defining and showing advertising all across most of the internet, pretty much. And it would also mean that all the participants in that ecosystem would also potentially become a joint controller to a degree. Uh, that meaning that both ad tech vendors and uh, even the companies that are showing ads on their websites, let's say the, or the apps, could also become joint controllers in that regard. It is a dispute and some questions are referred to the European Court of Justice, so we'll see where it goes and where like, it is actually approved and uh, this kind of interpretation but it could have quite big consequences for the joint controllership existence in Europe. The other case is a bit closer to Lithuania in a way, because it's about the app Quarantinas, it's about the quarantine app, and the questions refer to, to the European Court of Justice. Um, for now, it's advocate uh, general uh, opinion on that. It, we don't have yet a decision, and it will be really interesting. Because the idea here, uh, I won't go into details of the case itself, but the theoretical side of it is basically that if an, even if there is an absence of any agreement between the uh, one controller and the other, the fact that we are, uh, we are well, controllers, of course, and uh, the fact that we have influence on the processing, so let's say if we have a convergent uh, decisions related to that, that could, automatic, uh, could mean uh, that we are joint controllers. So that could have some important consequences in that regard because, well, that explains that the agreement between data controllers for joint controllership is just a consequence of joint controllership. It would not be, it is, kind of, it is in line with the European Data Protection Board explanation of that topic. So yeah, that could potentially be quite important. And yeah, just to kind of wrap up, uh, is there like a chance for more widespread application of joint controllership? I would say probably not willingly, because the problem with joint controllership, in my view, is that for now we really lack a lot of certainty and clarity on where it should be applied. And the companies tend, in my view, sometimes tend to avoid joint controllership just because it is unclear to what extent does it create uh, responsibilities, joint, uh, like, responsibility for the processing and where does it end? Do I become like a responsible for entire like uh, processing of that data? Like the consequences of joint controllership are still very much not always clear and that is a result, well, still a huge question of whether it will be like a willing change unless we get some clarity from the data protection side. Yeah, so thank you. Mm -hmm.